Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We were just talking backstage before the recording, and I got to tell you, I am jacked up for today's episode. Here's a little teaser from Broke to $30,000 Days. Like, what? I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Thanks for joining us. Harmonious, let's ground ourselves. Where are we in the harmonious architecture? First, it is the 10 fundamental dis business disciplines that any business must master in order to thrive, scale, and succeed. You got to know all 10 today's story. We're probably going to spend a lot of time in you, which is ubiquity, sales and marketing, the online branding space, but we'll see where else we go. Listen, you don't have $30,000 days without mastering all 10 of those letters in the word harmonious, and I'm excited to hear all about it. I have an amazing guest lined up for you. Let's dive in. First and foremost, Liz, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks so much for having me. That framework is bomb, by the way. I love that I can just you know slide into to your framework effortlessly and help you folks out. Yes, absolutely. Let me just say that too, because I thank you for acknowledging that, you know, it's not, we have this framework not to exclude anybody, just to give people a place, right? Like everybody has validity in what they teach in the world of business, but how does it tie into everything else that we do? That's what we do here, especially on the show and at What If. So let's find where you fit, right? Awesome. Let's, let's do, it. do it. All right. Very cool. So let's, uh, let's first establish what, tell the audience what you do now and then i also i want to get to that backstory those thirty thousand dollar days that's going to be interesting but what is it that you're doing now in the world of online business yeah so i am um, a consultant a strategist if you will for branding and kind of income strategy so my wheelhouse is really taking someone who is still working in the offline world um, or perhaps uh, approaching retirement and is looking to really begin and or build their business online so it is the brand, the brand strategy behind it, how are they showing up? How are they representing themselves and their authority and the programs and offerings that's actually going to make them the money. So it, it really is kind of the business plan of um, the online world. You're already speaking my language. Obviously, <laughs> I love strategy. I love I love planning out. And that's what most people miss. I'm sure you, you understand this with working with your clients. Most people dive right into in marketing, you know, what tactic am I going to use? Is it right. going to be Facebook ads? Is it going to be billboards? Am I going to go door to door? I, I love that you're one level higher. Um, and that's where we always say is like your C-suite, right? Yeah. Um, you're the people who are looking forward. So, Hey, if you need help, we're already talk to Liz, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I love this. I love where you are. Um, you have an incredible backstory. Can you give us just an idea of, of what got you into this space and how you got here? Yeah. So much like the people that I serve, I was working, I was a corporate girl. I loved it. Um, I was in sales and marketing my entire career, 20 some odd years. Um, and I was loving it. Um, I moved from New Mexico. Uh, I'm a Florida girl by nature. So I moved from New Mexico back to Florida, which I really wasn't too keen on at the time. Um, I'm the only child, um, but my parents and both sets of grandparents are all entrepreneurs. So nobody has really had like a real job. Um, so I was the good corporate girl, you know, as entrepreneurs, a lot of people are like, you know, they kind of push their kids to corporate because as entrepreneurs, we know it's feast or famine. Like there's no insurance, there's no security of a paycheck. So we want that security kind of for our kids a lot of times. Um, so they were thrilled that I was the corporate girl and I had all the stability that they never had. However, I was the son of an entrepreneur, the daughter of an entrepreneur, and I had that entrepreneurial spirit running through my veins. I just couldn't label it at the time um, because I really wasn't pushed to be an entrepreneur. Everyone was thrilled that I was the corporate girl. So um, I moved to Florida and uh, it's like I said, it's not something that I was thrilled about. I ended up, uh, but it was destiny. I knew that. Um, I ended up working in like a billionaire's playground. It's um, it's a massive resort down in the Florida Keys. And um, I was working before that in a very specific uh, role um, in the country club industry. And I didn't even know that this other place existed. And I found them online and I looked in their careers tab and immediately right at the top was the exact rare position that I was working in in New Mexico. So I knew at that point, like I was getting the signs, you know, and I knew that that was where I needed to be, even though I didn't want to be there. So I moved down. My parents were thrilled. Remember, I was the only child um, and I have a three year old at the time. Moved down to the Florida Keys. It's beautiful. 
and I begin working. Now, the hours were extremely long. The pressure was extremely high. Um, you know, you're working with billionaires and celebrities and um, lots of sales goals. So although I did well, I was not happy. Um, I was coming home extremely late, uh, working New Year's Eve, Christmas Day, all the things, coming home to a you know plate wrapped in tin foil. Not soon after I began working there, it was um, August, and it was probably about two to three weeks in, um, I was in a training, and I could see my phone just blowing up during this training with a bunch of unknown numbers. So I thought, you know, telemarketers. When I finally got out of the training, I had multiple voicemails. So when I checked the voicemail, that's Moshi in the back back there. <laughs> when I checked the voicemail, um, it's the coroner's office. And my fiance had just committed suicide across the country in California. And uh, I was stunned. I had never gone through such a thing in my life. And just being there two or three weeks, you know, away from home, um, in the process of all of that, I still haven't received my items from my move from New Mexico to Florida. Um, I'm staying with my parents, waiting on my items, waiting to rent a place. And I also get a call, I believe it was that night or the next day. Um, I'm wondering where my stuff is at, nobody's calling me. And I get a call that they find out um, the movers had loaded up my apartment, so we got that far but they weren't coming with my stuff. They had closed up shop, stole everything I owned, like my kids' toys, my groceries out of my cabinets, my photos, my like everything I owned, and they weren't coming. So um, I was absolutely in shock. I was numb. I was desperate. I, I did not know which way was up. Mind you, I'm in a job that I have to perform at an extremely high level. I'm being surrounded by celebrities, many of the ones that you know, um, on a daily basis, high pressure sales numbers, long, long hours, trying to grieve, trying to be a mother, trying to figure out what I'm going to do for clothes, for just stuff. So I'm um, starting at zero. I haven't built up any kind of time off or benefits or barely any money or savings. I just spent it on my move to come down here. So I'm starting at zero. And at this point, I'm not even starting. I'm just trying to see, you know, the bricks that have just hit me in the face. Um, going to the thrift shop, buying clothes to go to work. And it's not the cool vintage kind. You know what I mean? It's, you know, other people's suits and high heels. And that's how I'm going to work. Working super long hours, coming home at night and um, plate of food wrapped in tinfoil. My three-year-old is asleep on my mother's couch on a trailer. Um, and that's exactly where I sleep too. And months go by and I'm just... I am just beside myself and I realize, you know, the tears and the depression and all the things um, turn into anger. You know, it was the, it was the next step in the grieving process, right? It starts to turn into anger and the anger was reflective of me thinking I have no control over my life, none, which means I have no control over my daughter's life, none. And that made me super angry um, because I knew, you know, here I am, I was, probably 38, 39 at the time. And I know I'm a talented person, right? I've been a successful career person. Um, I've won awards, you know, I'm a million dollar recruiter. Like I'm a successful, intelligent, talented person. And here I am sitting on a bamboo couch with zero. And I'm thinking, how did I get here? And what am I doing with myself? Um, but I didn't know what to do because I, all I've ever known is working for someone who was going to give me a job and pay me a paycheck. So um, literally Monday rolled around. I drop off my kid at preschool. My parents go off to do what they're going to do. And I'm sitting on the floor all by myself. And the only thing that I did have to my name was my laptop. And I'll never forget opening that laptop and Googling, how do I make money online? I had no clue that online coaching was a thing. I didn't know that there was this entire industry online. Nothing, because I was corporate girl. And I ran across Marie Forleo. And um, didn't even know who she was. Um, I didn't even have the foresight that possibly even coaches could be, um, you know, like scams. Like I didn't have any of that. So I just like literally click play on the video and I'm trying to take it all in, trying to understand what all this means. Can I even do this? So fast forward through the course and I'm like, okay, well, I think I got this. Of course I was on Facebook like anybody else would be. Um, and I decided because of my grief was so fresh, I was literally living it, 
that I would help other women navigate going through similar massive loss, right? So I started down that road doing a lot of kind of free coaching. For me, it was just conversations. You know, I wasn't coaching anybody. Um, and I was just seeking out women. I was in, you know, uh, survivor groups, thing like that. Just seeking out women more as a community than anything else. I really didn't feel like I was coaching or much less making money around it. But what I found were women that were um, perpetually stuck stuck, like they kept choosing the toxic jobs and kept getting into the bad relationships just over and over and over again. And I thought, mm, I don't think these are my people because I want to, I want to move past this. I don't want to stay in it. Um, in fact, I was desperate to move past it. So I was like, you know what? I'm not feeling this. This is not how I want to live. Um, now, mind you, in the beginning of the story, I told you my parents and my grandparents were all entrepreneurs. So I thought, you know, cause Marie Forleo was teaching, this was 10 years ago, by the way, um, you know, ideal client avatar. I'd never heard of you that term ever before. And I thought, okay, well, we need to figure out who we want to work with. I knew that I just loved entrepreneurs. I loved people starting something new. I saw my parents do it over and over and the excitement around having an idea on a napkin and seeing it come to fruition that lit me up. So I thought, you know what? I can help entrepreneurs with their sales, their marketing, their positioning, because this is what I've done my entire career. And so I shifted. I learned everything by myself. Um, I uploaded a WordPress website, completely designed my, by myself. I had photographs taken um, with a photographer. I did everything myself. I didn't even know you could hire people to do these things. There was no Fiverr. There was none of these things, right? Upwork, none of that stuff. So I had to learn it all. It was an extremely slow and painful process to go from corporate America to now building your own website. So um, now I had to figure out how to get clients. There were no funnels. I had no idea how to get a client. Um, so I just went into Facebook groups, which is where I was already hanging out. Um, and I had, there was, there was a group of women, uh, it was actually women and men um, that they were in sales and they were also asking the questions of how do I stand out? How do I brand myself? What are the things that I say? And I was like, this is my wheelhouse, right? Like I got this, but I didn't know how to make the invitation. Like how do, how does, how do we work together online? Like, you know, how, how does that even work? So I said, you know what? I made a post and I wish to God I could find this post to this day. And I said, I am clearing my schedule for the next four days. And take notes because this is the secret, Brandon, that you're waiting for. Ready? And Actress on the episode right there. If you're listening, watching, now is the notebook time. All right, Liz, lay it on me. It's not a big secret. And I'm going to tell you that. And people are going to be like, oh, here goes, right? Here's the clickbait. No, it's actually the one thing that works throughout all of time. And here it goes. I put a post in my Facebook group. And again, these were people that were not online business people, Okay. And I said to them, I'm clearing my schedule for the next four days. I am willing to help anyone and everyone for free. Here is my phone number. Uh, if you are looking to draft an email, create um, uh, an offer, it wasn't called an offer at the time, but so that you recognize it, create an offer, understand what to sell, understand what your position should be with your product. Here's my calendar. Here's my phone number in a Facebook group with thousands of people in it. You have four days to find me. So that blew up like I had no idea was going to. And I remember I sat in a lazy board recliner facing the window with my laptop on my lap and I didn't move for four days. And my schedule was booked from sun up to sundown for four days straight. By the end of it, I had no voice at all. And what I was doing was taking back to back to back to back to back phone conversations with people who had no idea how to position themselves. They had a thing to sell, they had money to make, and that's all I knew. And I just began delivering the house. I didn't know the concept of give it away for free. No, I was just doing what I knew how to do, right? Helping like if they were my neighbor. So the problem came when at the end of the conversation, they would say to me, well, Liz, how do we work with you? And I was like, uh, what do you mean? Like work with me. <laughs> I didn't even have my own offers. I had no pricing. I had nothing. So I was like, well, what do you want me to do? 
And they're like, well, I need a website and I need photographs and I need like, you know, names for these things. And I was like, um, I, I just learned how to do it for myself. I don't know how to do any of that. And I remember the very first person that I um, contracted with was a woman from Germany, which that alone blew my mind. And I charged $950 for a full brand. Liz, I don't know if you can hear me, but you're frozen a little bit. So my first client was out of Germany, which blew my mind as it was. And I sold a $950 branding package. I, I literally, it was a dart. I had no clue what it was even worth. And I, you know, liked the woman and I told her, okay, I will help brand you. I will build your website um, and your, you know, your products. And it was $950. And I was like, well, now how does this woman pay me? And, you know, I had to literally figure it out step by step in real time. But what I learned in the process was those four days was everything. I realized at that point, my voice, that there was a market, um, how to attract all in those four days. So I just rinse and repeated that. So once I had that first person kind of up and going and live, then I had something to point people to. Well, this is what we do. So um, fast forward to January 1st. So I started that probably in September. So now fast forward January 1st. I'm my only um, lead generation or funnel in today's language was having phone conversations, one-on-one -on -one phone conversations with people. Um, to this day, it is my number one lead generation method. So January 1st rolls around and um, I'm in bed. My husband's on one side, my toddler's on the other side. I'm still in pajamas and my phone rings. It was about 7.30 in the morning. And I look at the caller ID and it's, it's one of the people that I had spoken to over the past four months or so. So um, I still was not really rolling in the dough. You know, I was still kind of working and um, pick up the phone, go into the other room, um, end up having a branding conversation with this person who's in the offline world coming into the online world. Having that branding conversation with her, um, she books on the line uh, January 1st, 7.30 in the morning. And she says, what's the rest of your day look like? I said, why? She says, I have five more people who want to call you today. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess we'll just sit right here and take the calls. And Brandon, it was five more people just like her doctors, things like that, that were trying to come into the online world and booked right there on the phone, full pay credit card, the whole thing. Wow. And by the time that day was over again, no voice. My, uh, I had no idea what was going on and what was about to come. So I sat down pen and paper. I'm trying to write down everything that just happened in these five calls. And I realize I've just taken in $30,000 before lunch on January the 1st. And I mean, I was blown away. First of all, I was incredibly grateful, like on my knees, crying the whole thing, knowing what I had just come from four or five months before and thinking this is out of this world. And um, it really, as you would imagine, really changed my life. Now, um, of course, it, you know, we, it's not that we, you know, pack our bags and get on a cruise to Greece. Yes, you have to hustle and work. And, you know, I had to service those clients much like I promised all of those things. But the possibility of going from I have no idea what any of this is. I do not have the advent like we have now of hundreds of thousands of coaches willing to hold your hand and all the funnels and all the challenges. None of that existed. Um, literally, it was Google search. And um, it, it, you know, it changed my life. So I was in that business um, for a while, for seven, eight years, I guess. And um, COVID hits uh, March 2020. Um, we leave for spring break out of school and we never go back. Now, I'm living in the Florida Keys at this time. Uh, my rent was $3,000 a month. Um, like we're living to work. We are working nonstop. And um, 
I realized at that point, you know, this is not what life was going to look like in my mind. Um, and, you know, we live on an island at this point. So everything was shut down, nobody in, nobody out. And the only thing you had time for really was to think. And I thought, you know, what was life supposed to look like at now 45 at the time? And I literally grabbed a notebook and started writing out what I thought my life was going to look like at 45. And I said, well, there's no time then right now. I've reinvented myself before. I'm going to do it again. And I was like, well, what do I want? I wanted like to be out in the country and I wanted no neighbors and I wanted a very slow, slow life where, you know, my money went a lot further, all these things. And I started to write them down. I started to even, you know, kind of vision board it where every time I would see an image in a, in a magazine that resonated with me, I would put it in this journal. I started to look for houses um, online and uh, not knowing where I would go. And I had one prayer because everybody would ask me like, hey, Liz, where are you going? I had no clue where I was going. And my one prayer was, Lord, send me to a place that needs me. Send me to a place that needs me. That's all I would say. And I had no idea where I was going to land. And, you know, it's a it's a comedy show when I when I tell the story about the houses that we saw and where we ended up. But um, the moral of that story is we did end up um, living out in the country. I'm now in South Georgia and it was life altering as well. Um, built my husband's remodeling business. My husband was also kind of a laborer type person, not entrepreneurial at all. And um, he made the leap into his own remodeling business, helped him grow that for the past three years. And now we're back. So, um, you know, a lot of people have asked me, Liz, we, we need to not remember my folks, my folks were from 10 years ago. We need to rebrand, you know, we've evolved, we've changed. Where are you? And I'm thinking, I, you know, I'm building my husband's business. And it's just been that kind of constant knock on the door. Like you need to come back to your wheelhouse, come back to your wheelhouse. And um, so, you know, I'm finding folks like you and really coming into the new frontier with, you know, all the AI magic, all of the funnel magic. Um, but there's one glaring thing that I have found in the evolution of the landscape of the, over the past 10 years. Remember that I've mentioned, we didn't have, you know, Russell Brunson was just starting, you know, he was not a no name, but he was nothing like what he is today. And um, funnels were not the mainstream. Nobody was using the word funnel at the time. And uh, the big advent that I see now is with the ease of plug and play funnels, individuals that are wanting to sell online or create anything online, and they're using a funnel, they're skipping a massive step. And that step is the branding, right? Because they think, well, you know, I can just plaster my, little, my selfie picture up there on this funnel and give them a price and a link and off we go. And then they wonder why they flounder, why they struggle, why they can't articulate themselves what it is that they do. Because you've missed this massive step that we used to do all the time. You always started with a photographer doing your brand photos. You always started with a full on website not a Facebook page, not a funnel. And there was a way, there was a system that worked. Um, that's why all of the, you know, the big gurus now, like the Amy Porterfields and Marie Forleo's and the Jenna Kutcher's and all them, they didn't start with a funnel, right? They started back like we did before. So um, I have been able to kind of find my place even now, a decade later with all of these individuals that like, we have all the things, why is this not working? Or we have all the things, but I have no idea who I am or really what I do, you know. Um, and it's this magic of branding um, that typically so many are missing. So that's so interesting because, I mean, there's so much to unpack. I love, I love this story, the the triumph over you know, massive adversity, adversity in the beginning, and then where you've come and what you've learned along the way. Um, there's there's so much to unpack there, especially with branding and how to how to really start out with a strategy um, mm -hmm. in order to make it effective and have a business that people want to work with and pay money to. Yeah. Um, I, we have to, we have to wrap up pretty soon. I would love to save the juicy deets for a part two, yeah. if you're willing to come back. Absolutely. Um, because I think I, I love that you were able to just, you were able to make $30,000 on a, a business holiday on a day where One there post. should be no, one yeah, post. one one post. There's there's so much to unpack there. What's your current strategy of of marketing online and getting clients and branding? Um, I love this. I love everything about this. And and thank you so much for sharing it. 
Um, we'll schedule part two. We'll let you know in the in the show notes whether you're listening or watching, whatever platform you're on, when part two is going to come out. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss an episode. You don't want to miss Liz part two. Um, I did put in the meantime, Liz, your website yeah. down on the bottom of the screen. I know you have a, uh, a free giveaway for us. Can you quickly go over that and then we'll wrap this episode up? Absolutely. Yeah. So Brandon, I am still doing the free kind of guerrilla marketing. It's just because I believe in it so much. So the brand roundtable, which you're linking to, um, is a free Zoom uh, group call where I will go over um, your website, any branding that you have, any um, offers that you're um, tweaking or, or you know, designing. And we go over it live right there. And if I have to go four or five, six, eight hours, I will, depending on who shows up, there's no limit. Um, and it's me coaching you direct. So it's not pre-recorded. It's you know none of the goofy stuff. It's you and I jamming on your brand and you're getting real actionable advice. And that's not going to be around forever. So um, definitely jump on that link, get, you know, get a seat in there and, um, you know, grab all your brand assets and we will go through them one by one. There's even more to unpack there. I've never seen anybody do that. It's always yeah. a, a PDF of the three things you yeah. need to do with your brand. Oh man. I, it's I'm me. So it is me. That. Yeah. <laughs> talking directly about your brand, no matter what it is that you're selling, if it's coaching, if it's a book, if it's a product, whatever it is, you're going to get my direct coaching. This is so cool. Okay. There's so much to unpack. Make sure you subscribe for part two. Let us know what you struggle with, with branding, your branding in the comments, and we'll make sure we answer those questions on part two with Liz. Liz, thank you so much for being here. Um, you were a, a phenomenal guest. And I, for those of you watching, listening, again, please hit that subscribe button. I lied to you. I said we were going to talk about the you and Harmonious. We talked about an amazing story of triumph, and we touched on the you a little bit, but I want to dive in way deeper, way more, get those actionable strategies and tips, but you don't have to wait for part two. Click the link. It'll be in the show notes. It's on the screen here. Make sure you grab your time with Liz. Liz, I'm so happy to see you've upgraded to this decade. At least you're off phone calls. You're on zoom. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <the> me <meantime>. too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you again for being here. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you on the next episode of harmonious at lunch.